Hello, I hope you're having a good weekend, and I hope you are looking at this before Monday and before you read chapter two. I want to give you some help on how to use the textbook independently to help advance your own learning. So for this video, you will need your textbook, and you should turn to page 19, which is chapter two. Please pause this YouTube while you find your book and get to page 19. I'd like you to notice that each of the key vocabulary terms is in the right hand side of the page. Economy, economics, macroeconomics, microeconomics, and those terms in turn are used uh, within the context of the written narrative. That's one key feature, that if you can't remember the, na the uh, definition of the word, you better go back and reread it. And one way to do that is to make yourself a set of uh, flashcards. One side is the word, the other side is the definition and drill yourself. If you take a look at page 22, you'll see that this process holds out throughout the book. Fiscal policy, budget surplus, deficit, debt. If you look at page 26, page 26, there is a way in English language to easily determine that that's a definition. For example, the, disc, the discount rate is gives the definition. Also, often definitions are in parenthesis. So if you look at reserve requirement, then you see the parenthesis or required reserve ratio. That's another key to determining a definition. Another key to determining definition, same page 26, LO3, learning objective three, capitalism, colon, the free market system. Colons often designate descriptions or definitions. If you look on page 27, another key way to help yourself learn is to change the titles into questions. So for example, the fundamental rights of capitalism, change it to a question. What are the fundamental rights of capitalism? If you can answer the question, you're in good shape. This is perfectly easy because you see those little arrows on page 27. That's the equivalent to numbers or bullet points. Arrows, numbers, or bullet points. Those are the answers to the question of what are the fundamental rights of capitalism. The same thing can be applied to what are the four degrees of competition. If you can answer that question, you're in good shape. Take a look at page 28. Another key way of learning for yourself, directing your own learning, is to take a look at the pictures, the photographs in the book, and say, well, why is that photo there? What's the purpose? How does that photo help explain the written narrative in the book? You can answer that question. You're helping yourself a lot. Page 29, change it into a question. How is supply and demand a fundamental principle of a free market system? If you take a look at page 33, and we saw folks on the slideshow using this technique today, there is the business cycle. Take a look at the visuals. Each step is explaining the written information. 
So you've got written information for people who read, and you have visual information to reinforce the written word for people who prefer to learn in that style. Learning is up to me to create activities within the classroom that you prepare for outside of the classroom and that you do in the classroom. But you carry as a learner a fundamental responsibility like the American system of independence and taking care of yourself. See you Monday.